Okay, today we're going to be solving the hidden message I posted a couple days ago on July 2nd. And again, I'm trying to make these progressively harder, and uh, luckily there are a handful of people who made it through this secret message at the time of recording this. So let's go ahead and look at the original video. And it's a video of me talking. And if you hear that in the background, there are some modem tones, and I'm talking about dial-up modems, and I make a hint towards modem speeds of 56k, which I even said in the video it was a hint. So, at this point, you're going to want to, you know, download the video and figure out how to decode the modem tones. Uh, so, if you don't know how to do that, you can always use Google, and I'll type in Linux decode modem tones, and the first thing that comes up is a program called Minimodem, which should be in your repository. So use your package manager to install that. And it allows you to generate and, um, and decode modem tones. There's lots of protocols, if that's the right word, out there for different types of tones. One I've used in the past is called PSK31. Uh, the reason I went with Minimodem over something like PSK31 or the other ones is just because this is a nice shell option. All the applications I know, I know three or maybe four that can do other tones like the PSK31, but they're all GUIs and it's just overkill for what I'm trying to do. I want to just pipe my message in to generate it and then hand it a file and have it decode it. So Minimodem is what I went with and that's how you figure that out. Another way you might have figured it out, although I don't anybody knows this, is if you look at uh, the source code for that YouTube video, uh, there's a section called keywords, which is what I have the tags I put for that video, and the tag I put for that video was Minimodem. Uh, I don't know where else you can see the tags for a video, uh, but right there, and I'll tell you, that might come in handy in the future, knowing that, because uh, I might put other information there Again, little tips and stuff for some videos. But Minimodem is the program we're going to use. Let's go to our shell here. And the first thing we need to do, again, is download the YouTube video. So I'm going to use YouTube DL and pass it the URL for that video. It's only a 20 second video, should, so it should download pretty fast. Now at this point, we know we want an audio file because that's what uh, Minimodem is going to take. And I'm just going to take the video and create a WAV file out of the audio of it. So I'm going to say FFmpeg, I'm going to give it the name of our video file, and I'll just call the output m.wav. Now we have a WAV file. Now I can say Minimodem, and we're going to do dash dash rx for receive. When I'm generating it, I used uh, dash dash tx, dash dash, which is transmit, and rt, rx, is receive. And uh, the part in the video I talk about 56k modems, that threw some people off. Some people were putting 56,000. All I wanted you to put there was 56. We're going to do dash F for file and give it our file input. But this will not work. When I hit enter, it tells us that your stream must be one channel, not two. Our video file is a stereo, and this program only takes mono. Not a problem at all. We run the same FF. M, uh, FFmpeg command, but I'm going to add dash AC for audio channel and do one, and that will give us a mono file. It will ask me if I want to override the last one, I'm just going to say yes, and now we have a new WAV file, and we can run that same command again, and it takes that audio file, and these lines of the pounds uh, you can ignore. The standard output is just this here, which is a song by me, and it just tells you to go there and comment. So that is how you decode that. Now 56k is, or 56 is just one of the rates, uh, which is rather slow. I actually, again, uh, timed this out so it would be a 20 second video approximately for this message, but the same message could have been transmitted in probably about a second by upping that number. Letting you know that because that may happen in the future. Well, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say about this, but that's pretty much it. I'll post another hidden message video in a couple of days. Uh, oh, I do want to give credit to the people who made it. Again, I'm posting this, I'm recording this video a little earlier than I'm posting it, but at the time of recording it, um, well, let's go to the video where they were supposed to go. We'll pause that. And uh, so these are the people that made it there and they explained they all pretty much the same thing. Oh, another thing I wanted to say is you might have been confused 
in the video I'm talking and you have the modem sounds. Uh, some people thought that maybe one was in one channel and one was in the other, but no, uh, you can talk over these audible type channels uh, and as long as you're not making too much noise or like a staticky noise, um, you, it should decode. Of course, I test these before I make them public so I knew that it worked. Um, so no, you didn't have to remove the my voice at all. Uh, and this is true with a lot of these tones. So what's great about these things is a little more inf information here. Um, Dial-up modems, for those of you who remember the noise, and it's actually the tones. It's like uh, your modem was basically like an audio card, listening to that and decoding them. Similar things, again, I said like uh, PSK31, there's a lot of other formats out there that are used uh, in ham radio for sending messages so you can chat with people that way. But another example is uh, if you pick up any of your credit cards or any type of swipe card with a magnet strip. I've mentioned in previous videos, those magnet strips in the back are the, basically the same exact thing as a cassette tape. And actually if you pull the cassette tape head, the reader out of a, a cassette tape player, uh, you can actually read the magnet stripe on cards like that and you'll hear tones and then you just need software to decode them. You can actually find software out there um, that will decode cards like that. So that's a little more information on there. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you look forward to the next in video. Again, uh, I'm having fun making these. I hope you guys are having fun trying to solve them. Uh, and, uh, you know, it takes a little bit, you know, of uh, figuring out. But once you know what you need to do, it's usually only a couple of steps. I don't do anything where it, it's going to take you hours to decode something. You just need to figure it out. But look for those hidden messages in the videos. And as always, I thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.